So last time I replaced all of the ROM in the ARM2 breadboard circuit with RAM uh, without actually initializing the content of the RAM yet. And I built this circuit which will be used to initialize the RAM content. We had a few good test runs of this in the last video, showing it counting up, initializing all of the addresses. Uh, it seems to be doing the chip select correctly for all the RAM and the write uh, enable works and it flips across to this other mode once it's done. There are a couple more tests I want to do before we proceed though. So uh, before I connect the address bus to the CPU's address bus, I want to make absolutely sure that once this initialization process is finished, uh, the counters, the 590 counters here, are no longer actually driving that bus. They should be going into a high impedance state at that point. So one of the first things I want to do is check that that's happening. Then uh, I want to also make sure that the same is true of the data bus outputs uh, from these transceivers. And the reasons for those are just that I don't want to run into the issue where the CPU is trying to uh, write to either of those two buses at the same time as these chips are. I want to make sure that these chips are being completely passive after that point. So I'm going to remove the LEDs to test this. Uh, the reason for that is that the LEDs themselves uh, are actually pulling the address pins low through these resistors um, and that will affect the uh, and that will affect the test I'm about to do here. Uh, so with those taken out I'm just going to turn the circuit on and let that run to completion which I'll know because this will flip across at the top here. There we go. And now what I want to do is take some voltage readings and impedance isn't so easy to measure um, as voltage. Uh, you need to you need to do some calculations to, in order to work out what it actually is. But I'm just going to take a random pin here and just see what voltage we read from that at the moment. And that's reading 1.4 volts. So that's a good sign already because that's not uh, that's not a high or low signal according to TTL levels. And all I'm going to do to detect the impedance here and make sure it's gone high impedance is I'm taking a 1k resistor and what I'll do is I will wire the pin to ground through the 1k resistor and then I'll make sure that that was uh, able to pull it down to nearly zero and yeah that's a really good result there we're seeing minus 2 millivolts so that's probably just measurement error on the meter and again I can do the same thing to the positive rail and make sure that the 1k resistor is able to pull that high. And there you can see that's gone up to 5 volts now. And there's a very low tech way to, uh, to make sure that the uh, pin has gone high impedance. If the pin was actually outputting um, either high or low, then the 1k resistor wouldn't be able to pull it down to the rail like that. So with that one done, let's have a look at the data side of things. I'll leave that over there. I'm going to take one of the pins of the transceiver up here. And that's showing one volt now. So again, I'm, going, I'm just going to wire the pin up to the positive rail. Measure it again. And that's now 5 volts. And the negative rail. And I get 0. So that's perfect. Tell you what, just for comparison, let's look at what happens if we do the same thing to a pin which is, uh, which is being driven. So I'm going to take one of the outputs of this uh, D flip flop down here. This is the reset signal, so that's currently high. It's the inverted reset signal, so this is an active low reset. So that's reading 5 volts there. And if I put my resistor on that one now to, uh, to ground, you can see that that's still reading 4.8, 4.9 volts. So the 1K resistor is not able to pull a proper high CMOS output down to, down to ground, it only drops about 0.1 volts off that output. And similarly uh, we can take a low output and see what effect it has on that. Uh, if I pull that one to 
5 volts instead. So this is the non-inverted reset output, so this is the active, active high reset output. And again, we're seeing like 140 millivolts there, 130 millivolts, um, as opposed to zero without the resistor. So yeah, the 1K resistor is not able to have a significant effect on a nice low impedance output. Um, but for these high impedance outputs, it was able to have, uh, it was able to pull them all the way to the opposite rails. So that shows that the uh, address and data bus driver ICs are being properly turned off after the reset's complete. And we're good. So it strikes me that I didn't actually demonstrate here how to measure the impedance of the buses, uh, but uh, I only showed a mechanism here which allows you to kind of check that they are in a reasonably high impedance state. And I think that's fine and that's sufficient for what I wanted to do here. But before winding up the video, I thought I would explain how you can actually measure the impedance, um, just in case you might want to do that. It's important to bear in mind here that these ICs might not actually behave like a constant impedance source or sink. Uh, the actual impedance may depend upon the amount of current you draw through them or, in effect, the resistance you place across the, their load. So it's not necessarily the case that you can just name a single impedance figure here. And what you actually end up needing to do, you've probably seen in the data sheets for these kind of components, uh, graphs of uh, various readings at different load levels and that's kind of what you would need to do if you really wanted to characterize this properly. But what I can do though is show you a circuit diagram here to kind of explain what impedance means in this context and how you can measure it at least at certain load levels uh, just using resistors and a multimeter. So in this diagram you can see uh, a voltage source and it has a series resistor uh, which is considered part of the kind of voltage source itself. And the output impedance here is exactly the value of this series resistor. Now obviously in practice what we have in our circuit is not a discrete resistor in line with a, a perfect voltage source. But what we mean when we speak about the output impedance of a circuit is if it were a perfect voltage source like this, what would the value of this resistor be? And in terms of how to measure that, we can't just take a voltage reading across the resistor or something like that to work out what its value is because we can't probe the other side of the resistor because it doesn't exist. It's, a, it's kind of a virtual resistor in that sense. But the way to approach this is to put varying loads across the uh, end of the resistor that you can see and see what effect the different loads have on the output voltage that we can read. So earlier we were on doing this with a 1K resistor, which gives this equivalent circuit diagram. And we were measuring the voltage across that 1K resistor and generally seeing that the 1K resistor was able to pull almost all the way to ground, for example, or to plus 5 volts. So you can see that this 1K resistor and the output impedance resistance uh, kind of form a voltage divider here. And we're measuring the voltage across the 1K resistor, which is going to be some fraction of the uh, original output voltage on the other side of the uh, output impedance resistance. Now we can't actually measure what that original output voltage is, we can only measure on the near side of that resistance, so this doesn't get us all of the way yet. However, we can write this equation based on the way potential dividers work, um, which has two unknowns in it at the moment, but what we can do is replace the 1k resistor with another value, for example 2k, um, and then see what effect that has on the voltage that we observe. And from that we get a second equation here, and now we have two equations in two unknowns, and so long as they are not linearly dependent, we can solve them. So here I've gone ahead and done that with these example values, and you can see what the calculated output impedance was. Anyway, hope you like this. Uh, do let me know in the comments if you like this kind of thing. So next time we should be actually getting this properly hooked up to the RAM and getting the RAM preloaded. I think we're I think we're I think we're done with the testing on that. It's just a whole bunch of wiring that needs to be done now to make that happen. See you then.